obviously we're on the, the Nina, um, the, the replica of the Nina, which is built to scale. That's correct. And it was built to scale, and it was built using the same methods that were built 500 years ago. The ship was built entirely without electricity, so it was all done with hand tools, the way it would have been built 500 years ago. The ship is really constructed very solidly. It, it's almost overbuilt uh, by today's standards. But again, that's the way they built them. Uh, the ship, when you look at these beams in here, you can see the hand tools, the marks in them. It's quite fascinating. The, the planking on the ship is two inches thick. The counter shear you can see over here, it leads down to the frames. And you can actually see uh, between the, the seams of the ship that uh, there's a bit of accumulation of salt and things that uh, they do leak a little bit, particularly when we go back out in the open water after having been in the relative calm of the river systems. She will pop some seams here and there and you will see water coming down the sides of the ship inside here. And we always tell the crew to pull your gear away from the sides because it's going to get wet. And it lasts that way for about 10 days to two weeks and then it just kind of miraculously stops as it seals itself back up again. How did you know um, the specifications? Well, we know from the historical documents, uh, they spent several years of research, the Columbus Foundation, uh, in Spain, uh, researching records and historical archives, and we actually found a bill of sale for the Nina. I'm not the scholar that can dispute it, but Archaeological Magazine says this is it. This is okay. as accurate as you can build one today. I have my quadrant in hand. Okay. Columbus's favorite navigation tool. Uh, the astrolabe was just starting to come into use at the time, but it involved more math than Columbus was comfortable with. Columbus favored the quadrant. Uh, the little plumb bob here on the edge of the board gives you degrees of latitude on the planet. Be zero degrees at the equator, be 90 degrees at the North Pole because you're looking directly overhead, and anywhere in between is your degree of latitude on the face of the Earth. And that's how Columbus sailed the boat across 3,000 miles of open ocean and managed to find the same island twice.